Hello and welcome back to Flashy and Puddles. Today is the second of the two-part series of things that you should do before you even start playing WoW. At this point, you don't even need the full game, you can still be on a trial account. I'm not sure off the top of my head what the restrictions on a trial account are in terms of class race selection, but I can guarantee you that you cannot be a Death Knight nor a Demon Hunter on a trial account. Now this is actually a blessing in disguise, as these are known as hero classes and therefore start at higher levels. Death Knight starting at level 55, and Demon Hunter starting at level 98. In fact, even a full player cannot make a Demon Hunter as their first character, even if they wanted to, as they need a level 70 character on the server that they want to make the Demon Hunter on first. And although someone who just bought the game CAN make a Death Knight as their first character, I do not recommend it, Blizzard does not recommend it, and many other players would not recommend it. I strongly urge you to start out at level 1 and learn the game from there, not be thrown in in the middle of the game and expect to have it all figured out. If you want to make a Death Knight as your first character though, knock yourself out, but I will not be covering Death Knights in this video. In this video I will be going over each class that starts at level 1 and a little bit about each specialization or spec that each class has and what roles that class can fulfill in a group. But first, I want to talk about roles. If you have played any major MMO with some form of dungeoning in it, then you should already be familiar with the three basic roles, Tank, Healer, and Damage Dealer, or DPS. And although not technically a major distinction, some will divide it even further in WoW into melee and range DPS. If you're not familiar with these three basic roles, then let me give you a brief overview. First we have the Tanks. These characters are made to take a beating, with large health pools and an array of abilities to help them stay alive. As such, their job is to make sure that the enemies are attacking them and not a squishy DPS or healer. A tank is a central part of every dungeon or raid group, but they have a lot of pressure put on them, as one slip up can result in the wipe of a group if it is a serious enough mistake. However, tanking can be a very rewarding experience. Next we have the healers. Healers do exactly what their name implies, they heal the group. Mainly the tank, but they are expected to keep the entire group alive. Healing is a fairly thankless job as it can be just as stressful as tanking, if not more so, but without the same spotlight that tanks have. However, it can be just as rewarding. Lastly, we have damage dealers, or DPS, which is again exactly what their name implies. They're all about dealing damage and just smacking enemies until they're dead. They're a widely played role, as dungeons require 3 DPS, and raids can require anywhere from 9 to over 20 DPS. However, this comes with the drawback of being compared to a lot of other people in long wait times. DPS, however, is not a very stressful experience. In fact, it's fairly easy going, as a fight can still be completed with several DPS dead. One more thing. Remember how I talked about specs a few moments ago? Well, a spec is essentially a subclass. For instance, you can have two warriors, but they may perform vastly different roles. One of them could be a protection warrior and therefore be a tank, while the other one may be a fury warrior and be doing melee DPS. And even if they are filling the same role, they could go about it very differently. For instance, if you have two warlocks, one could be affliction and one could be destruction. These two both fulfill the same role of ranged DPS, but they both have very different playstyles, with one dealing direct damage and the other doing the vast majority of their damage through debuffs and damaging their enemies over time. All classes have three specs with the exceptions of druids and demon hunters which have four and two respectively. A character can readily switch between specializations provided they are out of combat, but her specialization can have widely different playstyles. For instance, I currently play my warlock as destruction and I like to think that I'm decent at it. However, if I tried to play an affliction warlock, I would have no idea what I'm doing and would just flounder around at the bottom of the DPS chart. Now we're going to start in on classes. Let me begin by saying that I am not an expert at all classes, and am simply passable, if anything, on the few classes that I do play, so I asked for some guildmates of mine to help out with a few descriptions. I personally only wrote the descriptions for Mage, Warlock, Paladin, Druid, Rogue, and Shaman. All other classes have been written about by someone else, and they will be credited in the video. Also, I don't really have enough time to get into the nitty gritty of each class, as there are 10 classes that I will be covering, and a total of 31 specs. And even if I took 5 minutes on each spec, which would not be enough to even scratch the surface of their gameplay, that would make this an over 2.5 hour long video. 
However, I will be linking the WoW Wiki page for all classes that are discussed in this video in the description, as well as the Icy Veins page for each spec, which go into gameplay, lore, and a much more in-depth description of each class. So if one of these classes piques your interest, feel free to click that link and read up on that class. Oh, one last thing. In WoW, not all classes can be played by all races, and there are no races that can play all classes. So I will be mentioning which classes can be played by which races in this video. I will also be putting a link to a race class combination chart in the video's description. Anyway, on to the classes! Druid Druids are a shapeshifting class and the most versatile class in the game. Druids are the protectors of nature and assume the forms of wild beasts to accomplish their tasks. In their balance spec, druids take on the form of a moonkin and deal ranged damage. Their base attacks build up astral power, which in turn enables more powerful abilities. In their feral spec, druids take on the form of a cat and deal melee damage through bleeding their target dry. In their guardian spec, druids take on the form of a bear and are tanks. They survive through dodging attacks, self-healing, and mitigating through their thick fur. Lastly, in their restoration spec, druids use the power of nature to heal people, specializing in healing over time and area of effect healing. Restoration Druids are the only Druids that do not have to take on a form to use their main abilities. Druids are a very restricted class, being only able to be played by Night Elves, Tauren, Worgen, and Trolls. Hunter The Hunter class is split into three specializations, two of which focus on dealing damage from a distance, and the last of which is a melee specialization. Starting with the ranged specializations, Beast Mastery is often considered the easiest of the Hunter's specializations as it relies heavily on pets to deal damage. The Hunter is free to move as he pleases as the specialization lacks any sort of cast time. Marksmanship Hunters have the choice of using pets or not using pets, and play a slightly more complicated spec, having less mobility and a larger focus on the timing of abilities. Finally, the survival spec utilizes melee damage in conjunction with your pet's abilities to deal damage. Survival is the most complex hunter spec to play optimally, but it allows different playstyles for less experienced players. The hunter class can be played by any race. Mage Mages are the typical caster class and can specialize in one of three schools of magic and their spells follow accordingly. Frost mages are a simple caster class to master as there are only a few added mechanics behind it. Fire is slightly harder than Frost Specialization to use, as it is all about chaining critical hits together. A more complex specialization is Arcane, which is the only caster damage class that I have found that is built off of true mana conservation. Mages are only able to perform ranged damage, and are not very restricted with race choices, as only Tauren cannot be mages. Monk Monks are a versatile class, being able to fulfill every role but ranged DPS in a dungeon or raid. Monks are masters of martial arts and attack using their hands and feet rather than weapons. Windwalker monks are melee DPS. They rely on chi to deal damage to enemies, with abilities costing varying amounts of chi and doing increasing damage the more they cost. Brewmaster monks are tanks. If you ever wanted to get drunk and get in a fight, this is the spec for you. They rely on the ability to dodge, and if a dodge is failed, they stagger some of the damage taken, so it hurts them over time rather than instantly. A word of caution about Brewmaster tanks, they are an incredibly different tanking class from all other tanking classes in the game, and even in other MMOs. I have yet to find another class that even remotely resembles it. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be a Brewmaster tank, it's just… strange. Mistweaver monks are healers. They rely on healing mists to keep their allies alive, specializing in multi-target healing more than anything. Monks are not restricted with their choice of race, as all races but goblins and worgen can be monks. Paladin Paladins are a versatile class and are the defenders of the light. Paladins are able to fulfill the same roles as monks, but in a more traditional fashion. In their holy spec, paladins use the light to heal their targets, specializing in large, direct, single-target heals. In their protection spec, paladins use the light in conjunction with their heavy armor to mitigate a lot of incoming damage, and heal themselves. Lastly, in their retribution spec, paladins use a huge sword or hammer empowered with the light to strike down their foes. Retribution paladins build up holy power through their basic attacks to power larger attacks. Paladins are fairly restrictive with race choices, as only humans, tauren, draenei, blood elves, and dwarves can be paladins. Priest 
The Priest class is a unique class as it utilizes the Light and Shadow to have two healing specs and one DPS spec. The Holy spec is the Priest's true healing spec as it is solely focused on healing throughput with Holy Magic. In the past it was loaded down with too many spells, and although it still has quite a few, it has a much more manageable amount. Discipline is the other healing spec, but it differs from Holy as Discipline uses both Holy and Shadow Magic and gets most of its healing from a shadow damage inflicted upon enemies that heals certain players that have a healing buff placed on them beforehand. Shadow is the Priest's DPS spec and utilizes Shadow Magic from the Void to do damage with a mixture of damage over time spells, better known as Dots, and channeled abilities to build up Void energy. They then cast an ability taking on a new form, and between dots, channeled abilities, and void bolts, eliminate their enemies. Priests are completely ranged, and everyone except orcs can be a priest. Rogue Rogues are the only class that is pure melee DPS, and all of the specs have two similarities. The first being that they all build up combo points through their basic attacks to power more powerful attacks. The more combo points, generally the more powerful the attack. And they can all also stealth and sneak around. Rogues also get a bonus while stealthed, but cannot be stealthed while in combat. In their assassination spec, rogues focus more on poisons and damaging their enemies over time. In their outlaw spec, rogues are pretty much pirates, you're, you're, you're playing a pirate. In their subtlety spec, rogues are ninjas, no really, you can also play a ninja. Rogues are not very restricted with their race choices, as only Torrin and Drana cannot be rogues. I wonder why. Shaman. Shaman, sometimes pluralized as shamans, are warriors imbued with the power of the elements. Shaman also use totems to empower themselves or their allies, or even deal damage to their enemies. Shaman are a very versatile class, they are able to heal and do both melee and ranged damage. In their enhancement spec, Shaman dual wield weapons that they empower with the elements to strike blows directly to their enemies. In Elemental, Shaman are ranged DPS that throw lightning and fire, and can even cause earthquakes to defeat their foes. Lastly, in their Restoration spec, Shaman make use of the healing power of water to aid their allies, specializing in multi-target and area healing. On the Alliance side, Shaman are fairly restrictive, as only Dwarf, Draenei, and Pandaren Shaman exist for Alliance. But for Horde, every race except for Blood Elves and Undead can be Shaman. Warlock Warlocks are a caster class that deals with demonic and fell energy. They also have a handful of demonic companions to assist them in combat. The first warlock spec is Affliction, which specializes in damage over time spells and draining the life out of their enemies. Next is Demonology, which has the warlock call upon more powerful and more numerous demons than the other two specs, while still doing damage themselves. This spec is all about controlling your ever-growing swarm of minions. Lastly is Destruction, which is all about dealing direct damage to their enemies, largely through means of fire to burn them all to cinders. All races but Torin, Draenei, Night Elf, and Pandaren can be Warlocks. Warrior Warriors are one of the melee classes, specializing in doing high amounts of damage in either of their DPS specs, or holding the attention of their enemies in their tanking spec, which allows warriors to fill more than one role. Warriors also have high levels of mobility through their charge and heroic leap abilities. Fury is one of the two damage dealing specializations of warriors, and specializes in dealing high amounts of damage in short bursts, thanks to being able to become enraged. Arms is the other damage dealing specialization. Arms takes a little more thinking to play, and does high amounts of damage through debuffs. Protection is the warrior's tanking specialization, which stays alive by mitigating a lot of damage through a shield, heavy armor, and just outright ignoring it, while also doing a considerable amount of damage for a tanking specialization. Overall, warriors are great in most situations, and are able to be played by every race. So there you have it, a quick and dirty description of each of the classes in WoW that start at level 1. Before we go, I'd like to say a few more things. First, don't pick a class just because it's the best at the time, because if you don't like that class, then you won't be able to perform as well as you will in a class that you actually like. Also, don't listen to what other people tell you about your class or spec being garbage or wrong. For instance, I play an Arcane Mage, and people always ask me why I don't play Frost, as Frost Mages currently tend to do a lot more damage than Arcane Mages. The reason is simple, I don't have nearly as much fun as Frost as I do as Arcane. 
However, as much fun as I have in Arcane, I did start to get bored with it, and as soon as the boredom started, I switched over to a Demon Hunter tank, which is currently my main, which is alright to do. In fact, I've had four characters that I would consider my main in this expansion alone, which has been out for only a little over a year now. It's also alright to play a class for a long time. In fact, the person who I tank opposite with in my current raiding group has played a paladin for almost 10 years and still has fun with them, and that's the important part. Play a character that you have fun with and you'll have fun with the game. If you try to force yourself to like something, then you won't have fun with the game. There are currently 36 specs in World of Warcraft, so odds are you'll find something that you like. If people try to berate you for choosing the wrong spec, just ignore them, as all classes and specs are viable until the absolute highest tier of content when slight differences in the specs begin to show. That's all for this video. I hope this helps you narrow down your class choice and helps you get started in WoW. If you have any other questions or you feel like I didn't cover something correctly, drop a comment down below. If you like what we're doing and would like to see more of it, please like and subscribe. Other than that, have a wonderful day everyone.